Welcome to week 12 of tax season, everybody. And unless you've been living under a rock, you now know that the tax deadline has been extended from April 15th to May 17th of 2021. And I'm not sure if I'm happy about that or not, but there it is. We've extended it for another month, a little bit over a month. And the reason it's the 17th instead of the 15th, like was originally released is because the 15th actually lands on a Saturday. So they made it for Monday, which is the 17th. So, Today, I was supposed to talk about subcontractors versus employees and how those individuals should be treated for tax purposes and compliance purposes. But ultimately, there are just too many things going on right now that I need to address. So I'm kind of throwing my lineup out the window for the most part. And I'm going to start going week to week for now because things continue to change. And I think also I'm not going to make promises about what I plan on covering the next week. Um, I'll mention something, but it's not set in stone. So just know that my plans may change next week, depending on what happens out in the world of taxes. So the first thing I, I want to talk about is whether or not you should actually wait until May 17th to file your taxes or even October 15th, which is the extension deadline. And my answer is no, I want to get these done as soon as possible, especially if you're a small business owner or an individual who's looking for tax strategy and planning. If we wait a whole half a year to do your taxes, that means that is extra information that I am missing in order to advise you about how to handle this current year. It's not that I can't advise you without that information. I can. I'm just a lot less comfortable about it because I don't have the full tax picture like I like, like to have in, to advise all of my clients. So that's one big reason why, why I'm like, let's not wait. Let's go ahead and get these done. Another reason that I know a lot of people want to wait until the absolute last minute to file their taxes, especially if they owe something, is because they don't want to give the government money until they absolutely have to. But here's the thing is that I can actually enter a later date for payment than when we file. So if we're going to file this month, but you don't want to pay that bill until May 17th, then I enter May 17th as that payment date. As long as that date doesn't go beyond the deadline, the system should handle it and you should be able to file your taxes earlier. Now, as far as those of you who wait until the deadline in September, October timeframe, yeah, that's not a good idea. I know a lot of you do it because again, you know you're going to owe money and you don't wanna give it to the IRS until you absolutely have to, but here's the problem. The joke's kind of on you at that point because everything is due by May 17th, most years April 15th, regardless of whether or not you've done your taxes. So if you wait until September, October to do your taxes and you owe money, the IRS then goes back and retroactively calculates penalties and interest, which accrue each month based on your balance with them. So you don't actually wind up saving any money or keeping anything from the IRS or the federal government. You wind up owing more money than you would have if you just filed your taxes on time in the first place. So those are the reasons I would say, let's not wait until the last possible minute to do your taxes. Plus, I want to go on vacation, you know, at least I'm hoping to go on vacation. So just keeping my fingers crossed that maybe that's a good enough reason for you to get that stuff into me early. All right. So the next thing I want to talk about is unemployment compensation exclusion. So things have changed there. And this is like the first time ever I have known for something in the previous tax season, you know, so for 2020 to change in the middle of tax season. So a lot of you received unemployment compensation and then went and um, filed your tax returns already. And then they changed the rules on how that unemployment compensation is going to get taxed. So the first thing I want you all to know is that I do not want you to go amend your returns. The IRS does not want you to amend your returns. So stop right now if you're in the middle of doing something that like that and wait, because what's going to happen is that the IRS is going to go ahead and recalculate those returns that have unemployment compensation reported on them and then either send the refund to you for the money that you shouldn't have had to pay or apply it to whatever balances you already have with the IRS. So there, again, do not go running to amend your taxes. Now, just what 
is the unemployment exclusion. How does it work? Well, here we go. If you received unemployment compensation and your adjusted gross income, we call it AGI, is below $150,000, you qualify. Of course, everybody's like, what's AGI? I get that a lot. What in the heck is adjusted gross income? All right, well, let's start there and let's turn your attention to the 1040 line number 11 on your tax return, okay? That is your adjusted gross income. And if it's a under $150,000, there's our first step, okay? It doesn't matter if you're married, filing jointly. It doesn't matter if you're single. It doesn't matter if you are head of household. As long as that line number 11 is below $150,000, you're going to qualify for this exclusion. Now, the next thing that you need to have is you need to actually have unemployment income. All right. So if you have something called a 1099G that has been assigned to you, that has been reported on you, then you're going to be including that in your tax return. But how is this all reported? How is it calculated? Okay. Well, let's start off with the fact that the exclusion is for unemployment income up to $10,200 per spouse. So if you have two people in the household that received 1099Gs, unemployment compensation, it is going to apply to both of you. So it would be a total of $20,400 per spouse. So I'm going to run you through an example. And again, I'm going to turn your attention to a form that you probably haven't paid much attention to. And it's called the Schedule 1. And specifically, you're looking at lines 7 and 8. Now, line seven is where all of your unemployment compensation is being reported, okay? And then line eight is where it is being calculated what is actually non-taxable. So as an example, if you are two people, spouses, and one of you receives $20,000 in unemployment compensation, and then the other spouse receives $10,000 in unemployment compensation, what you're going to see on line eight is $20,200 reduction in your taxable income. And the reason for that is because one spouse received $10,000. So because it doesn't break the $10,200 barrier, that entire amount for that con unemployment compensation is excluded. Now for the person who made $20,000, that means only $10,200 of that $20,000 is going to be excluded, leaving $9,800 that is actually going to be taxable for federal income tax purposes. So when you are doing your taxes, make sure you're checking out the Schedule 1 and that your software is actually calculating that correctly. Okay. Now, the other thing that's going to be really important for you to know about the unemployment income exclusion is the fact that the states are going to be different from the federal returns. The federal return, the federal government has said we're getting this exclusion, but the states may not do the same thing or they may do so in a very more limited capacity. So it's something to keep in mind that you may see that exclusion on your federal income tax return, but not your state income tax return. So just be looking and figuring out what your state rules are. Okay, everybody? All right, I think that covers it for today's video. Uh, again, next week, my plan is to go over something that has been happening a lot this year. I ask people for copies of their previous tax returns when they're new clients of mine. And this year, for some reason, I'm getting a lot of attitude about it and I don't understand why. So next week's video is going to be about why I ask for those tax returns. So hopefully we'll see you there. And of course, feel free to reach out to me if you have any additional questions about today's subject matter or anything else. Take care, everybody.